Hey, today I want to talk to you about mixed bus compression in a way that makes it easy to understand. Hey, what's up, my friend? The Crystal Lim here from Mixdown Online. Once again, we are going to talk about compression like we did a few weeks ago uh, with vocal compression. Now we're going to talk about mix bus compression. Now, if you're new to compression or you're a bit confused about what compression is all about, how it works, um, and the idea behind working with compression, you can download my free PDF guide on the fundamentals of compression. Uh, this is where I share with you everything you need to know about compression, how to use it, and also the different types of compressors that are out there like a VCA compressor, a FET, a Nopto, a Verimu compressor, a digital compressor also. Everything is there, free for you to download. The link is down below. All right, now let's talk about mixed bus compression and why do we use mixed bus compression. Then are we going to dive into Cubase, are we going to open a compressor and experiment with how that sounds on the mixed bus. So why a lot of professional engineers uh, tend to work with the compressor on the mixed bus. So that is simply to glue all of your tracks together and by using a compressor it will do so. So what that means is that the compressor will control the dynamics of your mix by bringing down those peaks if you have some for a more steady mix. It will also help to contain the low end of your mix and make bass instruments like kick and bass a bit more tight. And it will also shape the vibe and energy of your mix. So this is basically what we mean by gluing things together. So what I'm going to do next is to show you how I work uh, with a mix bus compressor on my mixes, the compressor that I work with, and also all the parameters uh, that I work with like most of the time when it comes to mix bus compression. So I want to make it easy for you. Now the compressor that I work with the most when it comes to mix bus compression is a hardware unit called the Tegler Krem. I actually talked about this one uh, a few years ago. I made a, like a full video on this one. I'm going to leave the link on top if you want to watch it. It's a stereo bus compressor. It's a a VCA type compressor like the SSL compressor that is well known for uh, mixed bus compression. So it's fast and transparent. Now I'm not going to work with this one for this video. To make it simple I'm going to use the SSL the stereo bus a compressor by Waves which has the same uh, type of parameters that I'm that I'm used to work with with my Tegler Creme. So basically how I work at compression on the mixed bus uh, is I tend to be very gentle. Okay let's not forget that a little is going to go far when it comes to compression on the mix bus. As far as the ratio goes, I'm going to keep that to a 1.5 or a 2 to 1 ratio. Usually I just set it up to 2 to 1 and I go with that. When it comes to attack and release, this is very important because this is actually going to shape the vibe and energy of your mix. I keep my attack time very slow. Like in this case, it's at the slowest. We're talking about 30 milliseconds for this plugin. As far as the release goes, it's the opposite. I keep it fast. In this case, I'm at around 100 milliseconds. My suggestion would be between 50 and 100 milliseconds for a fast release time for mix bus compression. So this way my mixes are going to stay punchy, alive and upfront. And this is what I like. When it comes to the threshold, uh, now I'm going to play with the threshold uh, to get a gain reduction of around 2 dBs or so. So this is going to be my uh, starting point. And to be honest with you, these are the settings that I have on my Tegler Creme and I rarely touch them, you know, so they usually stay, uh, stay with these parameters and I'm good to go. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is to have you listen to a mix uh, with these parameters and we're going to play around uh, with the attack and the release so I can show you an example on how that's going to sound like if you have a fast attack and a slow release you know and so on so let's go and uh, put on the headphones and listen to what we have with those parameters on So now the attack is slow at uh, around 30 milliseconds. Fast release, two to one ratio. I'm getting around two dBs of gain reduction. If I bypass it, okay. Let's do this again. If 
I feel that it's a bit too much, I'm gonna turn my threshold level down a bit. Okay. One trick is to overdo it a bit until you can hear compression and then tone it down until you, you actually don't hear it much. And there you go. You know, like I said, you don't need a lot uh, for it to work very well, okay? So a small amount of compression is gonna go a long way when it comes to the mix bus. Now let's play with the attack time and make it slow to see the difference. A very fast attack. Now I'm getting a lot of compression. Let me bring the threshold level down. So I'm at around 2 dBs of gain reduction. Now you're, you're starting to hearing a bit, a bit of pumping, you know? So that, that's what a fast attack is gonna do. It's gonna suck up the life uh, of the mix by cutting off the transients, you know? So this is why I tend not to go with a fast attack. I wanna leave those transients uh, through uh, so I keep the punchiness of the mix, okay? Let's bring back the attack to slow. Way better. Huge difference. Way more smoother and also, like I said, way more punchier. So this is what the attack time does on the full mix. Now let's go and look at the release time. Okay, now the release time is fast. If we bring it slow, listen to the difference. Okay. There's two things happening here with the slow release. With a slow release, first of all, you can uh, you can hear that it compresses longer the signal. It kind of brings the uh, the overall sound a bit more further away and way more controlled, and not necessarily in a good way. Okay, listen to how much the sound in general will come up front with the fast release. You know, now, now the whole mix is a bit more in your face, okay? So this is what a fast release is gonna do. And also listen to the tone, okay? Listen to what a slow release is gonna do to the tone. It's gonna to bring the tone a bit more darker. Okay, so you can tell with the fast release, it's a bit more bright, a bit more upfront compared to a slow release. Uh, so that's why I always, uh, uh, I always use a fast release on, uh, on a mix bus compressor. But there's also auto release, which can be useful. You know, So if you're a bit confused about uh, um, the release time or you're not sure a fast release is gonna work well on your mix, you can try auto release. Okay, so this is gonna be a program dependent uh, release time according to to what is feeding the compressor. So it's pretty cool. Let's go to a fast release now.
Okay, so again, it depends on what you're mixing. Sometimes it's gonna happen that I'm gonna just reach for an auto release and it's gonna work well with my mix. So for the most part, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm always gonna start with the fast release. But if a fast release sound a bit too aggressive, uh, I'm gonna go and try out maybe a slower release time or auto release is usually what is gonna work well. It's gonna sound a bit more smoother um, and that might be a good way to go if you're not too familiar with compression or if a fast release sounds a bit too aggressive or too upfront, you know? Uh, so auto release can be also a very good option. Now, I always suggest uh, between 50 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds as a starting point as release time goes. Now, if your compressor does allow you to go even faster than 50 milliseconds, just pay attention on the saturation that it's gonna create, you know, because the faster the release time, chances are that you're gonna end up with a bit of saturation, okay? So just something to pay attention to if you're using a very fast release time. But between 50 and 100, you should be good, you know, especially at 100, this is kind of my sweet spot uh, to start up. Now, when do we start adding a compressor on the mix bus? Is it at the end of the mix or is it beginning of the mix or midway, you know? Um, actually, this is up to you. What I do on my side, I'm gonna add a compressor on the mix bus very early in the mixing stage, uh, right after I'm done with my static mix or a balanced mix without any plugins. This is something I like to do when starting to mix a song. I'm just gonna make a quick balance mix of the song and then once I'm ready to start diving in a bit deeper in the mix, I'm gonna start by adding a compressor on the mix bus and uh, you know, mix into compression. And this is basically what I do on my side. If this is what you do, or if you wanna experiment with that, the most important thing you, know, you need to remember is to pay attention to the amount of gain reduction you're gonna get throughout the mix. Because the more you're gonna add plugins, uh, chances are that your mix bus levels are going to go higher, okay? So <laughs> you're going to end up with uh, probably more uh, more volume, more gain uh, on the mix bus, and that will affect your mix bus compressor. If you don't pay attention to this and you end up with too much compression, your mix is going to start to sound thin, lifeless, you know, without any character, okay? So you need to pay attention to this. So always keep an eye on that level, the gain reduction level of your mix bus compressor when you mix into compression. And that will help you to, to keep a very good gain structure while mixing also. Now, a lot of mixing engineers uh, will tend to add a compressor early in the mix and mix into compression, but some will actually add this near the end of the mix. And that's fine also, whatever works for you. Now, another question you might ask yourself is do you need mix bus compression? Is this something that is mandatory for a good mix? I'm gonna have to say no, it's up to you. If you're near the end of your mix, uh, you add a compressor on and it doesn't sound good because your mix without the compressor sounds better, keep it off, you know, don't add a compressor if you don't feel that you need it. Okay, so this is a personal choice. It's a mixing decision. And it's a technique that you can use or, you know, you just don't. So that is up to you. I like to use it. It works well for me, for my workflow. And this is how I use a mix bus compressor. Uh, and like I told you earlier, I always keep those parameters as is on my uh, Tegler Creme. I rarely go and play around those parameters. They always stay still. And what I do to tweak the threshold point, instead of bringing up and down the threshold, I'm only gonna bring up and down uh, the amount of gain that I am sending to this compressor unit. So if I have too much gain reduction, I'm just gonna bring that uh, send gain lower. And if I don't have enough, I'm just gonna bring it louder. So this is how I'm gonna control the amount of gain reduction that I have on this hardware compressor unit. So there you go, my friend. This is how I use a mix bus compression. And this is how I suggest you to use it. Keep it simple. Two to one ratio, slow attack, fast release, you know, two dBs of gain reduction, and you're good to go. That is a very, very good starting point. And the more you dive into compression, the more you can hear compression and the effect it does on your mix, um, you know, you'll have a bit more flexibility as far as those parameters goes, and you'll be able to experiment a bit more. So there you go, my friend. Don't forget to download the free guide on the fundamentals of compression. 
The link is down below. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to this channel if you're new here. You can also leave your comments and questions down below, and I'll be happy to reply to you. Until next time, my friend, take care and see you.